a good listener. It pleases the speaker to know you are really interested in him. And then, too, you can learn much by listening carefully. So, uh, I went to the library today and I checked out the Dewey Decimal System. Have you seen the Dewey Decimal System? Man, that's crazy. What are trees, man? It says that zero goes up to 190 times. It's just like, it's like a land coral, you know? It's like all the earmarks. Can you imagine that many different kinds of books? I can't even imagine that. And then when I was walking home, I was thinking about the alphabet, you know, like A, B, C, D. Aren't those crazy? D, E, F, G. Oh my gosh. With uh, people who my little pony. pony. All those kinds of things. Adults watch. And have you never noticed that uh, J and K are right next to each other, like JK? It's almost like the alphabet's yeah. trying to set you up for that. And uh, then, you know, like, it's, it's getting kind of sunny today. I didn't see that on the weather report. The weather report was saying that it was supposed to be cloudy today. Oh, what was it? What was it? What was it? Oh, God. What was it? Damn. Messed up stuff. And uh, on the sports, the Raiders lost again. Can you believe that? Oakland Raiders lost Nobody follows it. Now, I just love going to the mall sometimes. And uh, so, you know, I just really don't think that uh, we're compatible. And, uh, really? you know, speed dating sucks. And uh, so, so, uh, have you been listening to me this entire time? What? Yes. Yeah, sometimes I lose interest. Sometimes. It depends on like who I'm talking to. If it's not about a topic that I'm really familiar on. Just try to make sure that no one is ignored, no one is uh, offended. Something that makes me lose interest. The way people talk. The subject matter is not interesting. I have no idea like what they're talking about. I might feel really bad and I might like move or like go somewhere else. I will feel really bad because they're not paying attention to me. I feel really mad. And if they don't want to listen, then it's up to them. Someone's not like paying attention and I start saying something. I like stop and then I start over again. If he's not interested in my talk, then he's fine. And I'm good with that too. Hello? Becky? Who is this? It's, it's your grandmother, Margaret. I, you have the wrong number. You're calling the wrong number. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have a good day. You too. Bye. There's a technique to shaking hands. No one likes to have his hand crushed by a bear, nor to clasp one like this, sometimes referred to as dead fish. Good evening, I'm your host, Shapely Legs, and I'm Chase Moore. Now, in international news, in Kazakhstan, man wakens at his own funeral only to die moments later from a heart attack. Over to you, Shapely. Thank you, Chase. In tonight's news, teenage awkwardness is on the rise. We're here to show you examples of this awkwardness and how you can avoid them. In this first clip, we see what happens in high school when a hug and a handshake collide between two friends. On to our first clip. As you can see from this clip, these two people are not very good at handshakes and hugs. Oh, you could tell from that moment that they were just not invested. There is a certain amount of commitment that needs to come from your handshake or your hug. Two people need to be in perfect sync for it to work out correctly. You need to establish a relationship before you even attempt the action, or you'll get awkward results like this. Now that was quite informative. In our next scene, awkward teenagers, handshakes, and the combustible element of puberty that makes it all go awry. Coming at you right now. A, a true handshake must involve contact and a firm grip. Not hard, but not this soft and this uncommitted. 
Now, I understand why the soft handshake comes into play. Sometimes people really don't like the hard handshake, but you can't go in so weak. You have to have some sort of strength while going in for the handshake. Now, this is reverse of what we saw previously. While the one party went in too weak, this party goes in way too strong. You can see from the pain and confusion on, on the man's face, he was going in and expecting a very standard and very gentle handshake. This next handshake we see is the overzealous bro shake, as it were. The man on the left is a little bit too, too excited to be making a new friend, and as such, embraces him a bit too eagerly. The man on the right is very confused and is slightly surprised and shocked, especially when the collar flip appears. This next handshake is called crossing the line. This is what happens when both parties are a little bit too enthusiastic about the handshake and end up missing their mark instead. Many of eyes are probably in that hallway peering at that handshake and they save themselves last second from embarrassment. This next handshake, or lack thereof, is called a swing and a miss. This is what happens when two parties end up missing a handshake. I have to hand it to them though, pun intended that these two kids made it work despite what may be considered a very awkward situation. I like the commitments that they had, but after the first miss, I think I would have abandoned ship. Needless to say, that was embarrassing for everybody involved. So, Ed, how was today's food? I know my mom, she doesn't make really that great food, but how was it? Uh, it was it was pretty good. I mean, I only had to go like to the bathroom and go out like four times. Wow, really? So... I'll make sure I'll tell my mom about this. Yeah. Okay. and poems Pete had made about courtesy when using the telephone. Answer promptly. Don't keep the other person waiting. Friendliness is one of the main parts of courtesy. It saves time and makes your conversation more pleasant if you speak distinctly. It's courteous to be brief. Someone else may want to use the telephone. This is the same number you called before. Oh, I'm looking for Jackie. Do you know who she is? No, I, I wouldn't. This is the wrong number. In our next few clips, you'll see examples of a, of a few hugs that did not go as planned. On to our next clips. 
This first hug is called the under hug. The under hug is a very complex situation that happens when two people do not plan on it and one is just a little bit too happy to see them. Now this usually is a result of height difference, but what we see here is the taller party going in for the underhug. This is almost reminiscent of a football tackle. You probably should establish the relationship of who you are and any physical differences before you actually go in for a complicated embrace. Now as previously talked before, you have to acknowledge the height difference between both parties. Now the taller party went for the appropriate hug, which is going over. However, the lower party was not enthused, nor was he ready for it, which this hug turned out to be reminiscent of a straitjacket. A straitjacket of too much love and too much affection upon a first meeting that would have very well settled for a high and simple goodbye. Sadly to say, I don't think this relationship will last for long. Disappointing. This next hug we see is the simple side hug. The side hug is when one party is a bit unenthusiastic about a hug. You see that this is a problem with connection and a problem with a little bit too little affection. This is a move that you use to get out of a situation, whether it be potentially awkward or you just don't want to be there. As you see, when the party on the left leaves, the party on the right is left confused, shocked, and slightly saddened. This is what happens when there has been a matter of distance or time between two parties. Now, this is the inverse of what we have with the side hug. This hug lasts too long. They didn't establish the amount of love, quote unquote, that they had for each side, which one party embraced affectionately while the other one was left with much confusion on his face. As you can see on the one party's face, he is very happy with this hug and is very enthused and extremely satisfied with the hug, whereas the other party we see it looks confused, frustrated, angry, and maybe just a bit uncomfortable with the situation. We hope you enjoyed this program, and we hope you've learned a thing or two about teenagers and awkwardness. We hope that this will help you and your situations in the future. Anything that you have to say, Chase? Well, yes. Kids are awkward, but we've all been there. Hopefully, by seeing these clips, we can help the younger generations get through their awkward days of puberty. Thank you very much, Chase. I've been I've been your host, Shapely Legs. And I'm Chase Moore. And that's all for tonight's news. Good night and good news, Philadelphia. So has someone ever called me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, they have. There was one person. They kept on calling me, asked me if I wanted to go on a cruise. I didn't know him. Yes. Uh, somehow he got my number. I sound really annoyed and then I just say bye. And I asked him like, who are you? I said I, did not, I didn't sign up for it and eventually they stopped calling me. But I'm never usually rude about it unless they're really giving me a hard time. I just hang up. Have I ever called the wrong number? I actually have, yeah. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, one time I was trying to call. Uh, when I was younger, I tried remembering my dad's cell phone number. 991 and I called 911. I called him up and it was, uh, some older woman. Uh, embarrassing. Embarrassed at first, and I felt like bad that I like, called the wrong number. I'm always like precise, like whose number that I'm calling. Matt? Yes? Do you know why you're here, Matt? No, I don't know. You don't? No. All right, well, it says here that you uh, exhibited a failure to um, comprehend language, communicate and interpret intention properly through various social media. That's a lie. Is it? Because it says here that you liked the picture of somebody's grandmother. 
It was a good picture. And another student, you poked him so many times that he wantedly destroyed every single electronic device that he owned. Yeah. Or for the sake of keeping with the parameters of my job title, uh, we won't explore the fact that you barricaded the doors to your house after you discovered you were two Twitter followers, or that you friended uh, 5,000 individuals, only a fraction of whom it looks like you've actually talked to. Now let's address like, all right? Okay. Like is the worst feature on Facebook. You want to know why? Sure. It's ambiguous. And ambiguity is the worst thing you can have at a site where everybody reads into everything. You like walking the dog, you like ice cream, you like uh, the kid in your physics class. It's a landmine. You need to be more specific. Uh, sometimes I just like something. That means something different to everyone. What's more specific than like? Love. Exactly. That's what you want to say, if that's what you mean. Other examples, phrases, and the... That's cool, that's nice, that looks fun. So it's not me, it's them. Precisely. The like is less about what you mean and more about how other people are going to interpret it. So how do I express my feelings about somebody's grandmother's picture? Well, you don't. Not typically. But if you really admire the way the picture looks, you would say something like, um, the aesthetic characteristics of this composure um, are exquisite. It removes the emotion from the mix and expresses at least what I hope you're actually trying to say. Yes, yes it does. Alright, now, alright, what's next? Food pictures on Instagram.